Good morning. We begin this, after, this morning with general questions, and we will start with question number one from Dean Lockhart. Uh, thank you very much. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to reported concerns by social workers in Fife regarding health problems being caused as a direct result of GP shortages. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. Well, uh, NHS Fife has refuted the claims, stating that it was not aware of any such issues having been raised with the practices concerned or indeed with the Health Board. It reports that these practices continue to offer the full range of appointments to all patients who need them. Uh, NHS Fife and uh, Health and Social Care Partnership um, and the Health and Social Care Partnership routinely engage with patients and of course have robust processes to deal with any concerns that might be raised. Uh, more widely, the Scottish Government is aware of the pressures facing general practice and is fully committed to supporting a sustainable model now and into the future. And that's why we've made additional investment this year of £71.6 million across Scotland in direct support of general practice. The Health and Social Care Partnership and NHS Fife are developing a new multidisciplinary team approach to support general practices, which will include, for example, nurses, pharmacists and physiotherapists working together to transform the way services are delivered in the community. Dean Lockhart. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. This week, it has been revealed that the GP recruitment and retention programme announced in 2015 and costing over 7.5 million to date has failed to deliver the required GPs necessary in NHS Fife and other areas across the country. When this programme was announced, the government promised it would deliver extra GPs for rural and deprived areas, including many areas in Fife. It has clearly failed to do so. Can the Cabinet Secretary please explain why this programme has failed to deliver the GPs that Fife and other areas in Scotland so badly need? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, um, can I tell uh, Dean Lockhart that the programme, the Retention and Recruitment Fund, it covers a, a huge number of areas and a huge number of initiatives, uh, one of which is about recruiting GPs directly, but many of which are about building capacity in rural uh, communities. And it would rather beg the question, would the Tories rather we hadn't taken these initiatives? Everything possible is being done to recruit GPs and perhaps the undermining of those programmes by the Tories doesn't really help matters. But let me tell Dean Locker exactly let me tell Dean Lockhart some of the areas that this fund covers. So, for example, it has delivered a GP enhancer returner and induction scheme, the Scottish Rural Medicine Collaborative, NHS Fourth Valley Stress Practice Pilot and Supported Induction Programme, the Deep End Pioneer Scheme in Glasgow, NHS Ayrshire and Ireland GP Early Career Posts, NHS Borders GP Recruitment Retention and Return Project, NHS Lanarkshire Recruitment Retention and Return Project, NHS Lothian Wise Doc GP Early Career Fellow Post and Local Marketing Campaign, GPST Bursaries, NSS are developing a national GP recruitment website, the RCGP GP Recruitment Recruitment Programme, NSS Primary Care Workforce Survey, uh, the NHS, NES, NES Broad-Based Training Pilot, okay, NHS Shetland Promote Shetland, Island Wide Practice, Iona, I think you've made NHS the point Shetland very well. Supporting GP Trainees in Practice, and finally, NHS Shetland Advanced Nurse Practitioner yeah. Prescribing Training. Surely the Tories would accept that that is a good thing to do, would they not? Maybe for once they could just congratulate the initiatives being taken by this government in order to recruit and retain GPs in Scotland. The Minister made a point very well. I wonder if she could be briefer in subsequent answers. Claire, thank you. Claire Hockey. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary welcome that Jeremy Hunt is now following Scotland's lead and has announced that they will develop a national workforce plan for NHS England, as the Scottish Government has? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, in reply, isn't it interesting that after all we've heard about national workforce planning from certain quarters in this chamber, that Jeremy Hunt is finally getting round to developing his own workforce plan for NHS England. And let me put on record, I am very happy to help Jeremy Hunt in the development of that na national workforce plan. And in fact, we'll be, offer, we'll be offering him uh, and sharing with him the work that we have undertaken in developing and delivering our own national workforce plan. But perhaps the Tories in this chamber will reflect that perhaps they need to get their own house in order.
order first before coming here and telling us what to do. And Neil Findlay. Um, straight question, straight answer required. Um, how many additional GPs were recruited in Lothian as a result of the £2 million fund? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I outlined in my initial answer, in NHS Lothian, there have been three projects that have been funded, and these are early days for these projects. Many of them are at a very early stage. So in Lothian, Wise Doc, the GP Early Career Fellow Posts, and the local marketing campaign has spent 115,000 in total over two years. Uh, why, and of course, um, uh, these things are at an early stage, and we would expect all of the projects to come to fruition over the course of the next few months and will deliver uh, what is required. Uh, and uh, uh, Neil Finlay will be very aware of the other initiatives being taken to try and recruit and retain in some of the very hard pressed areas within his constituency. Uh, so he should be assured that every effort is being made by this government and by NHS Lothian to recruit and retain GPs within his area. Question number two, Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on equality and human rights for older people. Minister Jean Freeman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Older people are a huge asset to Scotland and we are committed to working with others to promote and protect older people's equality and human rights and to empower them so that they continue contributing to Scotland's communities. Jeremy Balfour. Can I thank the Minister for her answer? Will the Scottish Government use the new Social Security Bill to replace attendance allowance for those over 65 for PIP? And would you agree with me that attendance allowance is discriminatory against older people and against their human rights? Uh, Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the member for his supplementary question. Uh, can I suggest that the best way that this government could go forward in uh, improving the benefits for our older citizens is for our colleagues in the Conservative benches to put significant pressure on their UK government to address these uh, discriminatory practices and thereby ensure yep. that the funding that is transferred to this government is adequate to do the matters that they yep. now press us yep. to do. Yep. Christine Graham. Uh, uh, thank you, presiding officer. I think I might declare an interest from some of the looks and older people. No, thank you. Is the Minister aware on attendance allowance that since the introduction of free personal care here in 2002, the UK Treasury over these 15 years has retained £600 million in that attendance allowance? And does she agree with me that Jeremy Balfour and the Conservatives should demand not only that this ceases, but we should have repayment of that £600 million which they've kept from Scotland's older people? Yeah. Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I think Ms Graham has just made my previous point for me very well. I, I should say it is not entirely at the hand of the current government that that money has been taken from the Scottish budget and therefore from older people in Scotland. Uh, previous governments at UK level uh, initiated that practice. However, it is now open to the current UK government to re address that wrong and also to provide us with the guarantee that we have sought but not yet received, that our intention to increase that provision to under 65 year old uh, intention, which I think was welcomed across this parliament, does not impact on those individuals' benefits or on this Scottish Government's budget. Question, question number three, Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it's doing to mark the Scottish witch trials during the year of history, heritage and archaeology 2017. Minister Alistair Allen. The Year of History, Heritage and Archaeology has provided a range of exciting events and activities during 2017, celebrating our traditional music, storytelling, world-renowned historic collections and our heroes. The year has been very well received, but a full evaluation of its success will be carried out. There are no plans to mark the Scottish Witch Trials during the remainder of the year, but we recognise the significance of this episode in Scottish history. Ruth McGuire. I thank the Minister for that answer and is indeed 2017 marks the 420th anniversary of the Great Witch Hunt of Scotland. The Minister will be aware of calls for memorials to be erected to mark the deaths of thousands of women who were brutally tortured and murdered during the Scottish Witch Trials. Does the Minister agree that the current lack of recognition is representative of a wider dearth of visible monuments to Scotland's women? 
and does he support the efforts of those striving to raise awareness of this significant period in Scotland's history? Minister. Well, while we don't maintain any kind of uh, register of existing statues and memorials, I think it is fair to say that uh, women are almost certainly indeed underrepresented in the memorials we have. Um, Historic Scotland, Historic Environment Scotland does run a commemorative plaque scheme uh, to celebrate the achievements of some of the figures in our history. And I'm particularly pleased to note that half of this year's successful nominations uh, were indeed for women. Rachel Hamilton asked the Minister if he would join me in asking if the witchcraft collection from the Henry Wellcome uh, Library in London regarding Scottish regions, although currently digitised and available online, would consider a Scottish tour of that particular collection. Minister. Well, while it's, uh, it's certainly not up to me to um, make decisions, uh, curatorial or, or otherwise, about uh, what exhibitions are, are held, uh, I think it is, it is fair uh, and reasonable for us, us all to, to, to recognise that the tragedy that, that uh, took place uh, at that point in our history uh, and uh, to recognise uh, any, um, any attempt to, to commemorate it um, uh, throughout Scotland. Question number four, Linda Fabiani. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with the Migration Advisory Committee. Minister Alston Allen. This week we published a response to the Migration Advisory Committee's call for evidence on the economic and social impacts of the UK's exit from the European Union on the UK labour market. While developing a response, Scottish Government officials met with the Chair and Secretariat of the Committee. Officials welcomed the Committee's intention to look at regional systems of immigration and also made clear uh, the importance of stakeholder engagement in Scotland to ensure Scotland's interests are represented in the Committee's work. My officials will continue to engage with the Committee as appropriate to set out the evidence for an immigration system that meets Scotland's specific immigration needs. Linda Fabiani. Uh, Sorry, I turned my microphone off by mistake. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer. And can I ask that he impresses upon uh, Westminster colleagues and that he asks uh, Scottish officers to impress upon them that Scotland has very, very different needs when it comes to immigration, all the way through our country and through our systems. Uh, I think that's been recognised not just by Scottish Affairs Committee, by committees of this Parliament, but I understand by the vast majority of MSPs in this chamber. Can it be put to the Migration Advisory Committee in no uncertain terms that Scotland's voice needs to be heard in this? Minister. Well, I, I was in the uh, committee this morning making some of those very points uh, and uh, it is important to recognise that Scotland does face uh, a different uh, migration need from the rest of the UK. Uh, in the UK, 50% or thereabouts of population growth in the next 25 years uh, will come from people coming from other countries. Um, but it is important and we must recognise that 100% of Scotland's population growth in the next 25 years will come about as a result of the fact that we are open to people from other European countries living here. We should recognise that and the UK should recognise that in the policy it allows Scotland to have on migration. Richard Lockhead. Uh, the Minister may be aware that there's a shortage of teachers in Murray, something I raised with the Minister of the Committee this morning. And I'm aware of two young teachers who were born overseas but wish to work in Murray schools but can't get visas. Is this something perhaps that the Scottish Government could intervene with and move forward. Minister. Well, while the Scottish Government has no say over uh, who gets a visa, we have raised many times, and I'm very happy to, to continue to raise this issue uh, about the unhelpful uh, policy of the, the UK Government on this and many other aspects of migration, which seem to be driven by the very unhelpful uh, uh, net migration target, which it has set itself uh, with absolutely no regard to the um, skills shortages or the workforce shortages that exist within Scotland or the migration needs that Scotland has as a country. Number, question number five, Pauline McNeill. To ask the Scottish Government what action it's taken to ensure that there's an adequate supply of ground floor properties in the social housing sector for people with accessibility needs. Minister Kevin Stewart. Presiding officer, all local authorities have a statutory requirement to produce a local housing strategy supported by an assessment of housing provision and related services known as a housing need and demand assessment. 
The local housing strategy sets out the priorities and plans for the delivery of housing and housing related services within the local authorities area, including for those with additional accessibility requirements. The delivery of affordable homes to meet specialist provision is important to achieving this government's desired housing outcomes, as evidenced in a Fairer Scotland for Disabled People, our delivery plan to 2021 for the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This plan states that we will work with local authorities, disabled people and other stakeholders to ensure that every council sets a realistic target within its lo local housing strategy for the delivery of wheelchair accessible housing across all tenures and that reports annually on progress. Pauline McNeill. According to Inclusion Scotland, 14% of households in Scotland include someone who uses a wheelchair or a, a mobility aid, yet only 0.7%. 5% uh, of local authority and housing associations are accessible to wheelchairs. Indeed, there is an estimated 17,000 wheelchair users in Scotland. I'm also struck by the number of people who come to my surgery, and I'm sure I'm not alone, Question, please. that for health reasons um, are unable to easily um, uh, do everyday things because they're trapped in their homes. Would the Minister consider an aspirational target of 10% for new stock being wheelchair accessible, or at the very least, could we it assured me that he would be proactive in encouraging more new build properties being accessible. Minister. Uh, President officer, I can assure the member that I will certainly be proactive in this area. Uh, and since uh, this government uh, came to power in 2007, we've seen uh, an increase in the amount of uh, homes specifically de designed for uh, wheelchair users. Um, I've uh, had the great privilege in recent times of going to new development across the country uh, and seeing wheelchair accessible houses uh, that are, are, are new on stream, including uh, Glen Oaks uh, development in Arden and Glasgow uh, and Margaret Blackwood in Dundee. I understand um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. McNeill's aspirational figure, President Officer. It's one that Glasgow has used in its uh, housing strategy. Uh, however, the government has asked for uh, more details on how that percentage was arrived at uh, and how that will be achieved. Uh, she can be assured that I will keep a very close eye on this. Uh, Ms Freeman, um, I have to say, has uh, been very robust in terms of dealing with these matters uh, and I will, would continue to encourage all local authorities and housing associations to take due cognizance of the needs and demands assessments in their areas. Question number six, Mike Grumbled. To ask the Scottish Government, in light of the reported funding problems facing NHS Grampian, what its position is on whether providing the lowest funding share of the national average per head of population meets its priorities for health care in the North East. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Population level is only one of the range of factors taken into account when allocating funding to NHS boards. Other factors include, for example, relative deprivation. NHS Grampian has received an additional £16.2 million in 1718, an increase of 1.8 per cent, which brings the board's overall funding to £898.6 million and within 1 per cent of its target share of funding in line with the NRAC formula. Since 2015-16, NHS Grampian has received additional funding of £47 million for the specific purpose of accelerating NRAC parity. Uh, in furthering the Scottish Government's priorities for healthcare, I also recently announced a new collaborative group to transform scheduled care and put services on a sustainable footing. And I look forward to NHS Grampian engaging in this. Mike Grumbles. <clears throat> Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that, according to SPICE, or Parliament's own information centre, that over the last 10 years, Grampian Health Board has been underfunded from the Scottish Government's own target, never mind the, national, the lowest share of the national average, own target, of £165 million. So the Minister responding by saying we've got £16 million or up to £47 million to redress the balance. Are my constituents in the North East supposed to be grateful for this? Minister. Well, the NRAC formula is specifically designed to distribute funding equitably across all communities, including deprived communities. And as I said uh, in my initial answer, uh, NHS Grampian is now uh, within 1% of parity and our uh, aim and our stated aim has been to make sure all boards are within 1% of parity. NHS Grampian is within 1% of 
parity. It has received, as I said in my initial answer, £47 million <coughs> for the specific purpose of accelerating that NRAC parity. And, of course, NHS Grampian has received a £3 million share of the £50 million additional uh, funding uh, to uh, ensure that they are able to tackle some of their waiting times challenges that they currently have. Alexander Burnett. Yeah, thank you, Presiding Officer. I have recently been contacted by constituents around concerns over lack of mental health facilities for those with eating disorders in NHS Grampian. Will the Cabinet Secretary give her reassurance to those suffering from such conditions that they will not be disproportionately affected, despite being the lowest funded region, and that more support will be given to NHS Grampian to support sufferers and their families? Cabinet Secretary. Well, well, of course, I, I can say to the member that I, I, uh, was, I visited the, the eating disorder uh, unit uh, uh, within uh, Aberdeen, which is a, a very important uh, specialist uh, service. Uh, of course, I'm very happy to write to the member with more details around the eating disorder issues that he raises. Thank you. We turn now to 